In the summer of 1942, American forces moved into the Solomon Islands with the aim of halting the Japanese advance and driving them out of the islands. They were met with heavy resistance as the Japanese were already well entrenched in the islands. As the Americans and Allied forces already there started to face difficulties in the Solomon Island campaign, a volunteer network was formed. It consisted of civilians, natives of the islands, and former government officers, among others. This group was known as the Coast Watchers and played a vital role in the Southwest Pacific Campaign of World War II. They would perform various roles, such as relaying intelligence to the Allies about Japanese positions, assisting in evacuating civilians, and ambushing Japanese troops. One of these men was Sir Jacob Vuza, a native islander who had previously worked for the native constabulary. After 25 years of service, he had just retired when the Japanese invaded his home island. Vuza immediately volunteered for the Coast Watchers, where his prior experience as a scout was put to good use. On August 7, 1942, Vuza located a downed naval aviator from the USS Wasp, who was shot down behind the Japanese lines and guided him to safety. It was there that Vuza met the US Marines for the first time. He volunteered to scout behind the enemy lines for them, and the Marines gratefully accepted. Several weeks later, on August the 20th, Sir Jacob Vuza was sent on a mission to locate suspected enemy observation post. While on patrol, he was captured by the Japanese Ichiki Detachment, a large force of the 28th Infantry Regiment, led by Colonel Ichiki Kiyono. The Japanese questioned him, and when he refused to answer, they found a small folded American flag in his pocket, which had been given to him by the Marines for identification. Now convinced that he was with the Americans, the Japanese tied Vuza up to a tree and tried to torture him into giving away information about the American positions. Vuza, however, refused to budge. The Japanese stabbed him six times in both of his arms, throat, shoulder, face, and stomach, and left him to die slowly. After the Japanese had left, Vuza somehow managed to free himself of the ropes by chewing through them with his teeth. In an almost superhuman act, he crawled back through miles of jungle to reach the American lines. Upon his arrival, he was met by Major Clemens, an officer whom he had served with in the Coast Watchers. Clemens said, He was in an awful mess. I could hardly bear to look at him. Clemens offered to take Vuza to an aid center for medical attention, but before Vuza accepted, he gasped a warning of an imminent Japanese attack on the position. This information proved vital to the Marines, who had no less than 10 minutes to prepare their defenses before the Japanese attacked them. The subsequent battle was a major victory for the Americans. All but 128 of the original 917 Japanese troops were wiped out, while the Marines had only suffered around 40 casualties. Without the vital information of Sir Jacob Vuza, the Japanese would have had the element of surprise, and the battle would surely have been disastrous for the Marines. Vuza recovered speedily, spending only 12 days in the hospital before he returned to duty as the chief scout for the Marines, and served there throughout the remainder of the Solomon Islands campaign. Major General Alex Vandegrift, commander of the 1st Marine Division, personally presented Vuza with the Silver Star for his actions. Vuza was also awarded the Legion of Merit for outstanding service with the 2nd Marine Raider Battalion and was made an honorary Sergeant Major of the United States Marine Corps. The British presented him with the George Medal for gallant conduct and exceptional devotion to duty. And in 1979, he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II, officially giving him the title of Sir Jacob Vuza. After the war, Vuza continued to serve his fellow islanders as president of the Guadalcanal Council and a member of the British Solomon Islands Protectorate Advisory Council. The Marines frequently came back to the island to visit him and erected a memorial outside of his home. Every morning until the day of his death, Vuza raised the American flag high above it, the same one he had been given by the Marines on that fateful day he was captured. 
he wore his Marine Corps tunic until the day of his death on March 15, 1984, and was buried in it. He will forever be remembered as the legend of Guadalcanal.